So I have uh, I've uploaded uh, uh, a very few slides, I can, I can you. and uh, I think I think uh, it's a tradition to have a few words at the end of each meeting, and so that's the point of the wrap up. It is not a summary of everything which has been said because that would be absolutely atrocious to prepare and impossible to listen without uh, leaving the room. Um, you find it? Okay. Here you go. Yes. Okay, so Yeah, I'm between you and going home, so I'm not, not going to uh, take very long. Okay, um, so this is a, just a little wrap-up. I think we've all appreciated uh, coming to Pisa, uh, and uh, we had a very nice uh, uh, meeting. This room is absolutely incredible, uh, and the settings were, were absolutely great, um, and the dinner was fantastic. Too much? No, no, no. I did it. You know, no. what saved me is I was engaged in a conversation with your uh, uh, INFN uh, Commission, Commission One person, and I didn't eat anything. So you see how much I uh, sacrificed for the cause. I can't switch. Boom. You may back. Okay. So the first thing I want to uh, say is that uh, this uh, basically is one. This meeting was one year after the kickoff of the FCC uh, of the FCC study, and our uh, mission was to scope uh, the uh, physics landscape. I think we have been doing this. We have been also scoping the uh, the experimental difficulties and the uh, problem with interaction region. That's quite important. Uh, we are preparing a document that summarizes the uh, conclusion of that first year, which should be available with some luck for the uh, Washington meeting. Um, the next events will continue our physics video conferences. I think they are quite important and often that's where the first uh, uh, ideas and things come up. So the next one is 23rd of February. No, you said last Monday of the month, so we just go for it. Okay. So, uh, and then the, the following occasion will be during this uh, Washington meeting, and then the 27th of April. Note also the accelerator video conferences, which we try to uh, send to the whole uh, FCC EE mailing list, and the next is on Monday uh, next week. Um, note that the uh, what you got from uh, Frank Zimmerman and also from uh, uh, Manuela Boscoro and and, and uh, 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 Mike Quartinos show you how much progress there is in the design of the accelerator. Okay, there's a very serious group working, and every time they look at the accelerator, they get a better luminosity, etc. So it's quite uh, uh, quite remarkable progress, the, the understanding of how to, uh, to build this machine better and better. The latest achievement was to actually show that one can get this large momentum acceptance, which is uh, uh, a key to be able to run that machine. So that was the uh, main stumbling block, I think. There's also a staging scenario which explains that, which shows that the RF uh, disposition, the, the most expensive part of the whole project is the RF, so it's uh, quite important. The RF disposition, uh, there's at least one reasonable scenario for it. So that's quite nice. Uh, the the uh, next big event is the general FCC meeting in Washington, 23rd to 27th of March. I think it's important that we show up in strength and number. So there's a website which I give here. You should uh, come and register. Uh, 
we don't have that much time for presentations. We have three. There's a, there's a lot of things about the accelerator and the infrastructure, etc. So it's a, it's a more uh, generally the design study is more focused on the accelerator and infrastructure than on the, uh, the physics sessions. But there's still three sessions of 90 minutes for ourselves, uh, and uh, I have been discussing with uh, the conveners. Uh, and uh, with Patrick preparing the agenda for the uh, FCC e detector and physics uh, part. Um, and we'll have some on the MDI and detectors and the specific things for the FCC e Then uh, there's also the next day, on the uh, Wednesday, the 25th of March, um, four sessions of 90 minutes on the accelerator itself. So that should be extremely interesting also to follow. And then on the Thursday, uh, 26th of March, there will be a uh, session on FCC phenomenology. That is joined between the Hadron machine, the Electron machine, and the EH machine. So we keep this um, important um, consideration that the Three machines are a package, okay, uh, um, and uh, uh, in particular, there will be experimental reports for the phenomenologists to discuss. And uh, one thing which is important is that there's four reports: one on electronic precisions, excuse me, one on electronic precisions, which will be uh, a combination of all the. Uh, electronic precisions from the EEHH and to some extent the EH machine that Roberto uh, will give. Higgs measurements, EEHH and EH, of course mostly EE and HH that uh, Marcus will make. There's one on the beyond the standard model searches at high energy, Mauricio will do that. And dark matter searches, I have asked Nicola if he could do it. Um, from EE, HH, and EH. And what's interesting in that, uh, thank you, Gigi. Okay, no, no, I'm not, I'm not switched on yet. yet. Uh, I've asked Nicola Serra, who's been doing the calculations for the uh, sterile neutrino, uh, and he hasn't confirmed yet, but it's quite notable that most of this uh, known experimental output of the FCC is mostly coming from the electron machine at this point. But it's quite normal because it's a, it's a domain of energy that we know better than 100 TV, of course. Uh, the, what? It works, it works now. Uh, next FCC physics workshop. Um, we think it's a bit too soon to do it in June. So in September, place and time to be defined, we might uh, go to Hamburg, for instance, in Daisy. Uh, it's important that these visits in the various places in Europe are quite important because each time you get to meet the local um, uh, uh, big wigs, and uh, and that was also the case here. It was very useful in Paris, etc. Uh, I should also mention the yearly accelerator workshop. Uh, Higgs Factory 2015, which will take place <coughs> if all goes well in, in Frascati, 16 to 19 November, which is a sequel of the uh, Higgs Factory 2012, which happened in Fermilab, and the Higgs Factory 2014, which happened in Beijing. And that's the occasion where all the actual physicists of the world meet to improve the designs of these uh, circular E plus E minus colliders. So, uh, make a few general remarks on this meeting. Uh, I think the first thing which was uh, great to see is that this first simulation of FCC signals and environment in the, uh, uh, in the FCC E. Uh, now, this is not quite yet an event display, but almost, okay, we're getting there. So, I think that uh, that was very nice to see. Um, then the engagement of the theoretical community yesterday afternoon and even this morning on uh, translating the precisions that we can achieve with this machine to uh, uh, 
discovery potential of physics beyond the standard model, uh, also on considering how to improve the calculation precisions by a factor of 20, which is obviously not a very easy thing to do. In fact, we asked explicitly to Sven to give an estimate of the number of man years uh, necessary to get to that point. So uh, uh, I think it's nice to see that people are starting to think about this uh, seriously. And uh, they're also inventing new things to measure. And that's really fantastic because uh, it's, uh, it's a very positive development. Now, of course, uh, to be noted is the quality of the work on the presentations and of the people doing the work. Uh, the quantity of people is an issue. I think uh, we are not that many of us here. And we need, uh, we need to, of course, consider what is the right periodicity of meetings. Uh, clearly, there's a meeting in Washington at the end of March. There was a meeting in Paris in October. Maybe we have uh, overdone it a little bit. But uh, we need to make sure we keep, um, uh, we get the resources to get new people who can work 100% of the time on the project, or at least 50%. I think that's a, an important uh, message. Uh, one of the positive things, too, is the involvement of the linear collider co colleagues. I think uh, it's small, but it's very positive. In fact, when we invite people, they do come. They are very interested. And uh, there's a largely shared opinion that the next step in, uh, in high energy physics should be an E plus E minus collider. So there's a common language uh, with, our, with our friends that way. Uh, clearly, there's uh, historical tensions, but uh, actually, we are, they are much less serious than what I was fearing. So, it's actually happening reasonably nicely. So, we should look forward to ways to improve this further. Uh, clearly, the involvement of the Italian community was shown by the fact that the first meeting had was common to the uh, HH and the uh, EE community and the presence of INFN officials. So all that was extremely positive. Uh, I uh, mentioned the following. Um, we had that meeting in Paris in, uh, in October. And then there was a uh, meeting of the Société Française de Physique, uh, the Physique uh, for Particle Physics, uh, which had a meeting to define what the next step in, in uh, particle physics should be. And of course, uh, they came to the conclusion that the first thing was to uh, fully exploit the LHC. Uh, uh, the, the community supports very strongly uh, reflections on the program of CERN beyond the LHC, that the study of which just began. Now, what did just begin? What did just begin is the FCC study. Why don't they say it? You know, this is the way people want to speak, right? The, uh, uh, official statements are often a little bit of a riddle. Uh, so what they want is uh, an E plus E minus collider to study in even more detail all the aspects of the Higgs boson that was recently discovered. These measures combined with the study of, top, of the top quark and uh, of Z and W bosons are essential for the quest of physics beyond the Sun model, uh, to which it also will contribute directly. So they identify the fact that these are precision measurements, but also direct discovery potential. And of course, you recognize, as usual, they are not saying it, but you recognize our, our machine in this way. Not yet. No, no, I haven't shown it here. This is an EE meeting, but oh, it, everybody understands that you have to start. But the thing which is important is that. Yeah, it says EE and HH, yes, yes. I think the, the fact that the EE and HH, and, and to some extent the EH, are a single package is what the study really wants to do. And I think the community is starting to get into it, to understand that we have to 
push all together if we want to have that 100 kilometer tunnel built. And once we get the tunnel built, we've won the business. You know, every single thing in those official statements you can read with all the context, right? Which is to say, hurry up because the Chinese are coming. I think you have to understand that there's a little bit of competition, which is good. Huh? But uh, the Chinese project is a, is, will be, I could make more comments, but it, they, are, they have picked up the idea. They understand that they can do an electron machine. They know how to do, well, they have some experience in electron machines. They've never built hadron colliders. And so they start with the electron machine, and they also understand that this is the first thing you need to do. Uh, now, they're not going to the top quark threshold in the present proposal, but you need to change the circumference from 50 to 75, and you get to the top quark threshold. So that's not, so, you know, if it happens to be uh, the right thing to do, I'm pretty sure they will do it. Yes? Organizers, yeah. Yeah, based on the whole community that if you build a bigger machine and a bigger circumference, is that you win out of the and also save on mean power and um, the map is getting cheaper because they don't need a spider for 100 TV for a hand machine. So they have a big, they have a 100 kilometer tunnel and they just put in 8 cell on it and they already have it. Yeah. I think so. I think that's correct. So we are in competition. At some, uh, you know, the fact that they picked up the idea gave us a lot of, you know, they drew the interest of everybody on our own project. Um, and in, to that extent, that was very helpful. But now we are in some sort of competition. Uh, okay. Uh, I wanted to make a special thank to Christina. She's done a fantastic job for the communication of FCCEE. Of course, the FCCEE website. Are you all registered? Uh, if you don't know how to do it, just go to the FCCEE web website. Uh, you, you Google up FCCEE, you're finding it right away. Uh, all the FCCEE posters, the video, YouTube, the news. Uh, she's uh, already prepared FCC, FCCEE, HH, uh, Wikipedia pages, which need to go through the uh, um, uh, coordination group before they actually appear in public, but uh, uh, they're, they're, they're really nice. And I want to thank Christina. Okay, and last but not least, I'd like to thank Gigi and uh, Roberto, I was going to thank the uh, uh, Pisa people, but you did it for me, so I, I skipped that slide. Uh, anyway, thank you, Gigi and Roberto. And long life to our project. Thank you. And we have a coffee break. And we, do we have a coffee break? Good. So we can all have coffee and then we go.